I'm Kate, I'm the Button Lady, and I am starting a vlog. So I figured I would give you guys a little bit of history as far as what I know about vintage buttons since I've been uh, collecting and working with vintage buttons for about four years now. I, um, I make a bunch of crafts and jewelry. Um, I'm moving towards more non-harm crafts so we can retain the history that is vintage buttons since they've been around for, oh, about 5,000 years. Um, little known fact, uh, the oldest button found um, was dated to around 5,000 years old and it was found in the Indus Valley or what is now known as Pakistan. And um, yeah, most of the time uh, in the early days of buttons, they were not a fastening agent. They were strictly decorative. Um, they were a symbol of wealth and status. So um, the first button guild was actually created in France in 1250. And um, they normally, like, they weren't being traditionally used as a fastener. They were more of a wealth and status symbol. So, you know, they would adorn, you know, clothing that would be, you know, revealing kind of like the bust and the arms. So a lot of men's coats would have them, you know, very done up. Um, when they were becoming into a useful state to fasten and close things, um, they actually, um, the, the way we fasten our clothes still to this day kind of goes back to when the buttons were first, you know, uh, instituted in the buttonhole and loop system. Um, we, the men would dress themselves so the buttons would be situated on, you know, the side that they would button. And then the ladies, who would normally be um, dressed by somebody else in their household, would um, be buttoned on the other side. So, it's just kind of weird that even to, to this day that still kind of holds up. So if you look at men's a men's shirt versus a woman's shirt that's a button up, they're on the other side. So if you're ever wondering why, that's your uh, little you know trivia bit of the day. I also wanted to show you some of my favorite collection, uh, my, my little hoard of buttons that I don't use for anything. I just strictly keep since I love them and they're beautiful. So see how well this works. Okay, so I'm gonna start this off. Uh, a lot of people ask me about my button collection, um, like five people, but still people ask, it's true. Um, so I figured I would tell you a little bit about my collection and show you some of my cool buttons. Um, a lot of people ask what my oldest button is, five people ask. Um, and I always tell them my favorite, uh, my personal favorite is my um, Connecticut National Guard Civil War coat button. And it was uncirculated, which means it was never actually on a uniform. Um, it's probably around 1865, um, so it's just kind of a really big, giant gold nugget. Like, it's really, it's, it's big. Um, it's not super heavy, but it, it was, you know, very decorative and ornate. But these are perfume buttons. And these were from um, probably somewhere 17 to 18, late 1800s. Um, ladies would have, you know, very limited uh, dresses. They would only have, you know, if you were a middle class woman, you would only have one dress. So a lot of uh, women would use these buttons with little bits of fabric. You can see some of the fabric um, still in some of these. And they would uh, use the uh, perfume buttons to add their fragrance since the fragrances were very caustic and very um, dangerous for um, human skin. Like they would have very bad allergic reactions since they weren't very refined. Um, so they would use these buttons as a way to save the fabric, save their skin, um, and romantically they would actually use these buttons to send with their soldiers off to war um, so they could you know have a part of them go with their soldiers so kind of a neat little thing also another type of um, buttons were the um, check glass which um, they are very pretty uh, they don't you can't find the originals very easily now, um, since a lot of them are reproductions. Um, during like World War One and Two, a lot of the Czech people were uprooted from their homes during the wars, and uh, they kind of just, you know, tuck, grab their shit and go. They would uh, pack up everything, you know, just their clothes on their backs, food, and just get out. Um, 
So a lot of the, the original uh, button molds are just kind of lost to the pages of history. They really um, haven't, haven't recovered a lot of them, but whole families would make these buttons. And um, it was, it's kind of sad that they, a lot of them were lost, but they're starting to find them and um, people are now using them and remaking them and finding the you know, original molds and recasting. So it's just kind of cool to see that they are coming back. They are making you know, new buttons. And the history is there. It's really cool. Um, one of my other kind of favorites are these China buttons. And these were, um, they're also called calico buttons. And there's a lot of information on these. There's a lot of different patterns. And um, this is just a small fraction of you know, the, the colors and things. Um, but they basically, companies would put in orders for these and uh, to match their fabrics and so they would kind of tailor make them. Um, a lot of the manufacturing process was they would make the buttons, they would lay them out on trays, they would use um, a paper with the, the ink on the other side and they would lay them on top of the buttons. They'd send them through the kiln process where the um, paper would burn away and the ink would remain on the buttons to be kind of locked in. Um, so it's kind of a neat process. There's a lot of information on that, um, which I just find really, really cool. I have a lot more buttons to show you guys. I'm not going to show them all to you right now. You're just going to have to stick around for that. Um, so if you like the video, I'm going to try and get a schedule going. I want to do at least two videos a week of uh, crafts and educational stuff. So if that doesn't float your boat, then... Adios, but if you do like it, please uh, hit the like, uh, help me grow my little tiny little channel, and uh, help me spread the word of buttons. Subscribe and you know, know your friends with all the things you're going to learn about vintage buttons and all the randomness. So, thank you guys. Bye.